I, I never even went back to cow's milk for the reason that I just felt that it was such a comparable product. And actually I felt made me feel a little bit even lighter. You have even like these mushroom milks coming out. Whoa. Magic mushroom milks Man. coming out. <laughs> hey, all right. Hey. Now we're talking. Hey. Now we're getting <laughs> radical. Uh, <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, there should be a program for young adults that requires them to go work in the restaurant industry. You're listening to the Radcast. If it's radical, we cover it. Here's your host, Ryan Alford. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the latest edition of the Radcast. You know, I feel hungry today, folks. I like talking food. I like talking plant-based. I'm here with Spike Mendelson, ex top shelf contestant, author, badass dude. What else can I call you, Spike? (laughs) All the acronyms. Dishwasher. Dishwasher. I know. True entrepreneur. Yeah. (laughs) I was just picking up trash in my office. I'm like, you know. Yeah, we, we do it all when you own the business, right? <laughs> Never stops. Never stops. Well, good to have you on the show. It's great to be here, man. Great to be here. So are you so wait, are you are you plant based? Are you are you are you Oh flex, no, I, lo- I like it. But I'm, yeah, like I I eat everything, brother. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. I haven't figured out how like I'm not a bodybuilder, but I do lift uh, you know, like five days a week. I mean I'm more into li- the the lifting side than the cardio side. And yeah. I haven't figured out the perfect balance. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. I'm going to get DMs now. Like, hey, you could totally be plant-based and get get all your protein and oh, stuff. Yeah. But I, <laughs> people, are, people are going to tell you to watch Game Changers. <laughs> I know. I, uh, but I haven't figured out that perfect balance, and I haven't given up. You know, We talked pre-episode about our, our caffeine kicks, but uh, I haven't figured yeah. out how to give up meat yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm not the uh, – I'm a flexitarian myself, so I'm not like really – you know, although, you know, we'll get into it, although I own some some vegan brands now, um, I've always been a guy to preach balance in our food system, to yeah. be honest with you, and not only in our food system, but in our own diets. I just felt like that's always the healthiest option. Uh, you, you know, too much of anything can't be great for you, I feel. Yep. So to me, it's always been about like, just f- figure out the, the right balance for yourself because we're, we, our body all reacts differently. We all need different things, right? So... We can't control that. Well, the Um, great Abe Lincoln said, everything in moderation, including moderation. Moderation, 100%. (laughs) I try to, I, I, uh, I try to definitely have moderation in moderation. Totally. (laughs) No, I, I feel like I have good balance there, but I, I, I am trying to figure out, uh, and maybe, maybe you can help me with this. The, uh, how to, to eat healthier, and on a time crunch and everything else. Not, I don't, I'm not a burgers and fries every day guy or pizza every day guy, but it's like, it's kind of confusing now. Like you got organic and you've got vegan and you've got, you know, all this stuff. And I think for some people it comes natural, but it's like trying to, to make the right choices and also yeah. have some flavor in your life, you know? <laughs> totally, totally, totally. I mean, flavor to me is everything because that's the only way you get people to adopt into – any new food trend, to be honest with you, right? So, um, you know, to me, it's all about like, again, like we're going to go back to like the idea of balance, but you going eating more plant based on uh, nutrition in, in your diet does not mean you're going to, you necessarily have to sacrifice flavor uh, and deliciousness, right? I think that used to be early stage when plant based you know, came into, into the space that it was kind of the rhetoric, right? You couldn't find a, che- a plant-based cheese that melted well or, or tasted like an American slice. Yeah. Look, look at milk, like look at the dairy market, look at the oat milks, the almond milks. I mean, that was an early conversion for me for, for like, I, I never even went back to cow's milk and for no reason at all that I just, I mean, for, for the reason that I just felt it was such a comparable product and actually I felt made me feel a little bit even lighter, you know? So if it just makes sense, like why, why even, you know, uh, indulge in anything that different. So, you know, it's just small steps like this, you know, I have a company called um, eat the change and we, we did this incredible planet challenge and we did it for about 30 days. Um, And we're a CPG company. We have like a mushroom jerky in the market, but, 
But the challenge was beyond selling jerky. It was about getting people to adapt small little habits in their lives uh, and do some small little tweaks that can get them to look at the plant-based motion. And there were easy things. They were like, swap your junk food for plant-based junk food one day, right? Replace your, your cow's milk creamer with plant-based creamer for your coffee. And it was just these small little steps that you could take in your daily activities um, that would get you going and give you a little bit of confidence that you can do this. So, you know, I think it just takes time. Yeah. And I, oat milk was the first, like I never liked, I don't know if what it was called, I guess it's the almond milk and all that. I was like, no, nah, not getting there, you know, trying to try to do things. But then oat milk came out. I'm like, okay, all right. Now we're talking. Dude, I'm, I'm drinking this ripple chocolate milk that's made out of peas right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Is it good? It's actually delicious. It's, it's, it's absolutely delicious. And that's the milk one's the, the one that's really like opened my mind up because you got the oats, the almonds, the pea milks. You have even like these mushroom milks coming out. Whoa. You know. Magic mushroom milk coming out. Yeah. Hey, all right. Hey, now hey, we're talking. Hey, yeah. Now hey. we're getting <laughs> radical. Uh, <laughs> Sign me but up. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what that's really what's exciting about the space, though, right? It's like <laughs> it's wide open. It's like the, it's the renaissance of the plant plant based movement right now, and it's it's just crazy to see everyone kind of adopting it. I know. I love it. Well, Spike, we jumped right into it, which I love it. Um, but I do want to give everybody a little background. Um, I'm sure, I, you know, as I mentioned, meaning you're on top shelf and I know that story's out there and it's been a number of years, but maybe give everybody a little bit of that synopsis on you and, you know, your history, uh, you know, building up to, you know, plant burger and everything you got going on now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to go way back top chef days, right? That, <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I think at least yeah. for a perspective, yeah. all these cookie shows are so damn popular, man. I mean, I, I, I couldn't so believe it. Yeah, like yeah. I've had. Like Noah Sims for MasterChef, like a lot, you know, a lot of my buds now like seem to be these come from these shows, and I'm like, well, I guess I just like food. I don't know what it I is, love, <laughs> and they I, I and all of you guys seem so fucking Sims. chill. Like it, I don't know. I seem to, you know, intertwine with that well. But uh, yeah, it's, I think it's you know part of your history. Yeah, Noah Sims is a vibe, by the way. Oh, I have yeah. to tell you, that guy, <laughs> I I love. I love everything he puts out there. He is, he's, he, I, I like it a lot. So he, I, it's him though. I don't know if you've yeah. met him or know him, but I haven't, like, it's, I haven't met oh, him yet. Dude. Yeah. I mean, we're like brothers from another now. Like, we text yeah. like every other day and you know, he's been, he's done a couple of uh, charity events for me and different things. And dude is, that is him. I mean, he is a vibe. He is, he, there's no one I've ever met like him and he's the fucking coolest dude ever. Well, yeah, no, yeah. Um, so yeah, so let's top yeah. chef days. I mean, listen, I I am cut from very deep roots in the restaurant industry. I'm from Montreal, raised in a big Greek family and Jewish family. Uh, all my family members, uh, my Greek family members, in some way, are involved in the restaurant business and still are in Montreal. You know, it, uh, the connection runs deep over there. I don't know if you you've ever gone to Montreal, but I have know, not been to Montreal. There's some what a what an amazing eating you know food city you, you got to go check it out on my list I'll give now. you all, I'll give you all the places <laughs> but um, you know and uh, you know I always spent my life in and around restaurant basically you know I make it always make a joke I'm just a dishwasher that knows some things because I wash so many dishes in my life at, at multiple restaurants so um, you know what I have to say that I got to stop you right there because yeah my first job. I worked at a meat and three restaurant. I was 15 years old and I washed dishes for eight months. I think it, it, okay. it made me who I am today. Like until you scrub macaroni trays and meat and three dishes with gravy, you, you haven't, you haven't worked. <laughs> you have not worked. You know what? There should be a program for young adults that requires them to go work in the restaurant industry, yes. like literally requires them, whether I don't care if it's dishwashing, cooking or waitressing or whatever, but there's some grit that it ingrains in you. There's some humility that it puts on you that I think you can't teach that. You can't ball up and teach that in any school. And, and yep. I, 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 I highly agree. I mean, I, I, love <laughs> that. I have to say it made me who I, who I am, you know? So, um, so yeah, I mean like, as so I grew up in the industry, 
you know, my parents start traveling all around the world. We went to Spain. We opened a ton of restaurants and then we landed in Florida. Uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll fast forward to I, I you know, was decided to go to uh, culinary school. And um, and then I, uh, you know, it was a culinary school that I got really like inspired because it was the first time that I felt a little extra confident about a skill that I didn't really look at as, as a skill. I was mostly kind of at that point still ashamed of being in the restaurant business, <laughs> you know, like your parents are, you know, in, in, in the restaurant business. Like, OK, <laughs> uh, so it was at school that kind of gave me the confidence and be like, Oh, you don't know how to make a Bernays or a stock or like it was stuff that I like just grew up with. So that's kind of what set me off. And from there is kind of where I just went working, you know, I went to France and worked for some of the best chefs in the world, the Relais Chateaus, three Michelin restaurants. I wanted to be a French famous, like three Michelin star chef. Uh, I mean, that's, that was the trajectory. Like that's who I went to go work for. And along those lines, I ended up in New York City, basically, working for Drew Nipperon at a Vietnamese restaurant. I had gotten a little bit bored of French food and was looking for, like, something to inspire me a little bit more. And Vietnamese is something somewhere I had traveled and really, like, took a liking to. Um, and then uh, it, the recession hit, you know, basically in 2000, you know, uh, eight and I decided to go on a Top Chef, a reality show. Uh, my sister was a fan of the show. I think it came out. It was right after Project Runway, so she just happened to, you know, get into the show. And uh, she says, "You have to go do this. You have to go do this show." And and I um, wasn't really into it. I was like, "What are you kidding me? I'm not, you know, I'm a, a three Michelin star uh, pedigree here, you know." And uh, and <laughs> and uh, soon enough, I saw one of my buddies on the show. I saw Marcel Vigneron on season two, and. Him and I were huge buddies and uh, big buddies in culinary school. And I was like, oh, let me go. Let me go do this. So, yeah, I, I did Top Chef. I had no clue what I was getting myself into. Uh, I had never done any filming in front of the camera or never cooking in front of the camera. Um, and it worked out pretty well for me. You know, I was able to, like, somehow come out of it with um, a really good edit, a really good somewhat of a brand, get recognizable. I had like this fedora I was wearing and <laughs> fucking with people the entire time on the show. And, you know, it was the guy that took it not too serious, but serious enough. Uh, and that's kind of like, that's, that's kind of what happened. And, and, and from there, it just, that, that show just opened up all the opportunities, um, opened up all the opportunities too soon in my life, to be honest with you, which was mm. interesting, you, you know, um, Usually you have to work a little bit harder in the industry to get some of those those opportunities, and and uh, that show was special because it really just super launched you into to getting all that kind of stuff. So that's that's kind of you know that's that's a little bit of Top Chef. I mean, I went on to do Top Chef All Stars, Iron Chef America, Iron Chef Redemption. I mean, every every show you could think of, I, I I've been kicked off of. So, uh, <laughs> but you know what, a lot of people. I just call it normal people that have these opportunities. Maybe some people see it, but some people turn their nose up at it or think, you know, but, you know, I preach, you know, in an agent, an ad agency, and look, I'm going to tell clients, attention is currency. And anything you can do to hack the algorithm to get awareness on yourself, whether it's a TV show or opportunity, you get eyeballs and that, that reach of you know media's reach and frequency and you get yeah. to go on a show where you have all this reach millions of people watching all the frequency because you're on every week until you get off or whatever but it just you get to shortcut the whole algorithm like you said of life and work and business yeah <laughs> yeah you get to do it um but when you do get it and like listen you get you you know people talk about like you get these opportunities in life and you you're either able to harness them and run with it uh, for the good or you get swallowed up and spit yeah. out. Right. <laughs> and, and um, I was very lucky because I had a, I had ingrained a business background, a restaurant business background and slightly, you know, some would say a, a, a hustle, you know, like my a big Greek family in the restaurant business, you learn how to hustle. You yeah. learn, you, le you know, you learn how to roll your sleeves up, go to work and, and, and get things done. You learn how to make noise. 
in a big Greek family to get attention, you know? <laughs> so, uh, um, and my sister actually also had a marketing degree. So right after Top Chef, I think reason why we were able to harness some success and really run with it is that I, I kind of leaned back into my family. You know, we had been away from the business for so many years. I went to culinary school. My sister went off to college and like my parents sold our childhood restaurants that we grew up in. And uh, when the recession hit, my sister lost her job. You know, my 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 uh, two star restaurant in New York City had folded, and uh, withdrew. And 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 um, my mother and father were driving us absolutely fucking crazy in retirement. So we all decided to get them busy again. And uh, it's a really they actually they they operate a lot better uh, working than uh, retirement. They still work till this day. And you know, my father is almost eighty now. But but um but we saw you know. We saw a unique opportunity in D.C. Uh, that was somewhat recession-proof because it's D.C. Um, it's not pandemic-proof. We, right. we found that pretty hard. Uh, found that pretty hard. Uh, but it was recession-proof. And basically, you know, we, we kind of ushered this idea of these guys that come off these Top Chef shows, reality shows, that they can bottle up and run with it, right? And we used uh, every ounce of marketing – and publicity to our advantage at the height of Top Chef brand, right? Season four, mm -hmm. whether Top Chef brand liked it or not, we definitely used that 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 <laughs> to our advantage, right? We, we get like cease and desist letters in the mail <laughs> using the logo and things of that sort. But to be honest with you, like, listen, you know, like that that's just, it's petty bullshit. I think Top Chef, did, I don't think they really understood what they really had launched, right? Which was, like this massive, like, like pumping of young chefs too early for their own good in the market with a ton of marketing and publicity that are going to start to open a ton of restaurants. And, you know, I think Harold from season one opened one real small fine dining restaurant, but I was definitely one of the, the, the first guy to go this fast casual route and make a ton of noise in a fast casual style or like by selling burgers, you know? So, um, you know, and we harnessed it and we worked hard and, you know, my family was involved and, and I think that's why we were able to be really successful. I mean, Good Stuff Eatery was an immediate smash hit in 2008, uh, I think was for a couple of reasons. We were in a recession. The Obama administration just got elected. And so there's a, a lot of influx of young people and entrepreneurs coming to the city. Um, and burgers were – the better burger movement was also happening at the same time. So – you know, that's kind of, that's kind of, we landed that whole thing. So, yeah, no, that's cool. So we had good stuff eatery. And then how, when was we, the pizza, when did that come along? So yeah, we, the pizza was like, again, just trying to harness on, 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 you know, strike when the iron's hot. We thought it was going to, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't know how long it was all going to last, you know? Yeah. I always joke with my mother cause she says, Oh, this is just a honeymoon period for good stuff eatery. There's lines out the doors. This will go away in six, seven months. And 15 years later, here we are still with Good Stuff Eatery. And the idea with uh, the the pizza was like we want to enter another fast, casual space with a celebrity chef and a favorite food group. Yeah. Um, we had real estate right next door to us on, on you know, uh, you know the, to Good Stuff Eatery. So we said, we miss pizza from New York. So why don't we bring, you know, a little bit of New York style pizza uh, to D.C.? And um we the pizza still kicks ass to this day i mean it's it's one of my favorite brands still to be honest out of everything that i've done it's super delicious and yeah i mean like that's you know that's what we started doing how what is i mean owning these businesses starting these brands i mean for people out there listening maybe i mean like i mean obviously you learned to hustle at an early age being in the restaurant businesses was not these aren't new business ideas to you i mean obviously concepts are new but running and, and operating restaurants or not. But like what as an entrepreneur has like been some of your biggest learning lessons? Oh, you know, uh, is that a where to start? Uh, <laughs> or is that? Yeah. A <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it, you know, well, my, my big learning um, in the business is and it, it serves me right uh you know i'd say i'm a pretty successful guy i'm i'm not uh you know you know in retirement mode or like <laughs> banking but I, i've always been able to remain authentically myself throughout the process 
for the most part, um, you know, on who I am. And people always say, hey, Spike, you have a fantastic brand. Who works on it with you? Or Spike, you this, that. And it's all I've always really giggled about it. And and uh, and and now that my my wife, you know, since we got she always like she sees it, too. And she's like, it's so funny. You're so right. She's like, I've never worked or had like a, a session where I sat at a table and said, what is my brand? You know, <laughs> right. like I've never, you know, and that was just me. You know, I'm not saying that's wrong. Like people, if you want to do that, go ahead, do that. But I've never sat and been like, what's the spike brand? Like, what are we representing? Like, what does it define? I've just always been able to get involved in pro projects that felt right for me at that given time. And, you know, it was a stepping stone or a pathway to my next project. But I always remained authentically myself. I never really, you know, felt like I, um, you know, I mean, that's that's kind of what I said. That was my biggest learnings. But the most, the other important one is um, surrounding yourself with with good people uh, and not being afraid to surround yourself with people that may be better, of you know, in certain things uh, in your business, right? Like, know when to know know when you're not the smartest person in that room on that subject. Right. And, and don't let your ego chefs can tend to have an ego cause we're, we're food and we're in kitchens and we're <laughs> badass and we're rock, we're the rock stars. And like all of a sudden now we're fucking doctors and lawyers and politicians, you know? Uh, um, but the truth is, is like, you know, I, I found that I'm, I, you know, my approach has been really great because I love propping others, up in that that support our you know what we do here like it's it's uh there's a, a great team behind me that I, that um and i have like two three guys that have been with me for 15 16 years and i think it's really telling because um you know we've all had such a good time in our lives for the last 15 years we've gotten to travel around the world we've gotten to eat delicious food we've all gotten to come up with really great concepts Yes, I'm the face. I get that. But I pay, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into being the face. And but there's also a lot of work that goes into setting up the kitchen and the recipes and the training and all that kind of stuff that I don't do, you know. Uh, so there's a great balance. And I feel very fortunate. I was able to surround myself by some some key members as well as my family at a certain point to, to help me do what we do. You know, like that's that's what it is. So it's always don't take it all on yourself or think you're, you know, it, it's it's doesn't exist without you know without you because it it sure can so how have you built you know as you've built these companies and you know i mean i get like running the day-to-day -day of a uh, you know restaurants one thing building that team but like yeah but your core team like around you you yeah. know like how did you how did you go about that process as your personal brand and obviously your restaurants and other things and and book and everything like that i mean how what was that process? How did you go about building your team? Yeah. Oh, you know, it, it's, you know, I, I, when you ask me that question, I think about the two guys that have supported me apart from my family, obviously uh, the most in my career. And it's this guy named Mike Coletti and Brian Lacayo. Mm -hmm. And uh, these guys were guys that I met. Uh, one of them I met at Le Cirque uh, when we opened the new Le Cirque in uh, the Bloomberg building in, in uh, New York City. And then one of them I met right, you know, at my Vietnamese restaurant when I ran with Drew. Um, and, you know, through thick and thin, like these guys, me, we're not perfect. We made mistakes along the way many times, you know, but I, loyalty and just being a good human and knowing that we're not perfect, I think is, is, is has paid dividends in my life because you know, it's hard to build that these days to, to have people that are around you that are, are loyal. Right. And, and, um, like those do or die, die people in your life, you know, like, uh, you just don't get that right now, uh, that much. And I think you gotta be really patient with it. Right. And, and, um, you know, and, and, um, and be, you know, somewhat forgiving at times. And, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's, you know, being in the restaurant business is much like being in a relationship, to be honest with you, like being married or <laughs> having a girlfriend or it, 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 there's there's emotion in it. There there's struggles in it. It's 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 very, very um, oh, sorry, I'm going to call me delete that one. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's 
you know, but listen, I have fallen flat on my, t- my face a million times in this business. Like, you know, like if people think like, oh my God, how's this guy like just, you know, like, you know, has uh, had a pretty good career, pretty consistent, keeps pushing it. Well, man, it comes from a, a, a lot of, you know, falling flat on my face, learning the hard way. Like, you know, I, you know, I go back to the days that I got trained in France, you know, I was like an, one of American chef, like out of 60 French chefs. And I got like humiliated every day for three months, like before they started respecting me at all. Like, you know, like that, that builds grit in your life, right? Like that, like lets you know, lets you know that like you got a lot to learn out there. And, and, um, you know, I, I never, I never took the easy path really. So it, it it just, um, I don't know. It's building a teams. It's, it's, it's for, it's a forever exercise. It doesn't stop. I'm, we're we're still trying to build a team now. Like we're in the middle of a pandemic, and it's it's not easy. But guess what? The two guys I've been most loyal in my life are side by side, going down this vegan uh, startups with me right now. You know, so it's it's a place we never think we'd be. So that's cool. I want to transition to Plant Burger, but before that, I mean, how often are you, are you cooking every day? Still, I mean, like, I mean, I see your stuff, and I know you do yeah. things and events here there. But I mean, are you in the kitchen every day? No, no. I I mean, I'm not in a professional restaurant kitchen every day executing a a service. Um, You know, I made a a big pivot in my life, let's say six years ago. Um, I felt like we were, you know, um, in our own bubble, our own restaurant bubble. And I, I, I felt our bubble was going to burst in a big way. Um, we, you know, we were opening restaurants at the highest rate that we, that we had ever opened restaurants, um, you know, food truck craze and every, every lawyer, doctor, career changer wanted to be in food business because it started to get celebrated. You have all these TV shows, you had all these celebrity chefs, you had, mm-hmm. you know, there's a big, you know, uh, in the last 10 years, America's food culture has grown in a massive way. Right. So mm-hmm. I started to diversify. Uh, my portfolio because I didn't want to only rely on having to run a restaurant yep. uh, to be my living. So, and what I mean by diversify is I meant I, I started getting into food policy. You know, um, I started getting into um, you know uh, consulting. You know, mm-hmm. for other people like for their brands. Yep. Um, I started looking at the plant based movement because I, I thought we were going to experience a massive shift in our food system, you know, yeah. which we are not only the way we grow food, the way we food travels, you know, you know, you know, all, all the things, you know? Um, and, uh, I would have never predicted a pandemic would have hit us the hardest and, <laughs> and, you know, bust that bubble for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, I never would have predicted that. But that's what you know. What that's what ended up tanking our industry for a little bit here, and and and, and popping that bubble. And um, is only because I started to diversify my portfolio, really, that I was able to like survive the pandemic pretty well. You know, uh, um, so that's that's kind of what you know my you know my thing. I opened a restaurant in a sports complex that was instead of you know uh, cuisine driven, it was driven off like three buzzwords, which was hearty, healthy, and hydration, and um, you know, like, I don't know, I, I might be the first chef to ever have a restaurant next to two hockey rinks in a sports complex, you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so I diversify, do, I, I just do different things that weren't, you're just traditional opening up a restaurant in a, in a, um, you know, in a, just a, a space, you know, and, and that's kind of like what led me to plant burger, which I think is the culmination of all my experience, uh, you know, thus far in the business, I'm able to put forth a brand, not only that really resonates um, and is like uh, very transparent, um, well, resonates with the advocacy that I love to do now, the food policy part of my my life, um, but it actually lets me be 100% transparent as an entrepreneur as well, which is you can't very say so often that, you know, as a chef, you're hundred percent transparent within your business. And what I mean by that is like, I had a bistro, I sourced local ingredients, 
but not all local, you know, yeah. that everything wasn't local, lo, like sustainable. Everything wasn't organic. Right. So if you're a chef and you're like out there and you're, 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 um, you know, doing advocacy on, on behalf of the farm bill, uh, for sustainability and you're doing advocacy for, you know, better food, nutrition and food deserts and this and that, you know, you'd like to feel that you, you're able to have those practices in your own business. But the market, the food industry set up as such, uh, that's often very much monopolized, obviously. Uh, so it doesn't really allow you, you know, to do that in a profitable way, mm-hmm. you know. So you're either going to die by your own sword here or, or you're going to decide to make money. So, you know, you do what you can. But with Plant Burger, what the most exciting thing for me is we were so smart about how we launched this. And again, it was not just me. It was a, you know, we have uh, Seth Goldman from Honest Tea and Beyond Meat, uh, that is our partner, and his wife Julie Farkas as well. Um, we have Ben Kaplan, which is our CEO, and he, he has a Scarpetta background and uh, Barbara Lynch background, and then we have Margarita Herdasio, which is a Yum Brands woman. So we have a ton of experience. But you know, we decided to open up our first plant burger um, inside of Whole Foods. We wanted to uh, basically do a proof of concept, right? And this was actually Seth's idea. Uh, he had a relationship with Whole Foods, obviously, with Honest Tea and all that kind of stuff. So we opened our first plant burger in Silver Spring in a, in a space that's a kiosk, no bigger than my dining room right here, 150 square feet, um, very small space. And we we built a real brand behind it, right? We just didn't say, oh, it's a small little kiosk. We really like built heavy really well branded. Um, and we entered the market as a delicious indulgent burger, not a vegan burger, not a vegetarian burger. Uh, you know, our, 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 our idea here is, is we're just a delicious burger like any other burger. Right. Mm. Um, and in fact, just to let you know, 85 to 90% of our clientele are not vegans or vegetarians. You know, mm-hmm. if that was a business model, we'd be out of business, right? <laughs> it's like getting those people like like you and I to have a little bit more balance in our diet, right? Yeah. And others as well. You know, if, if your cholesterol is a little, you know, too much, or if you're eating too much red meat and you need to eat a little less, you love burgers. And you said you're not too much of a burger guy, but there's a ton of other, you know, plant based foods that you can, you know, uh, yep. enjoy. So we launched Plant Burger and. Uh, you know, out of 115 square feet, we were doing six thousand wow. dollars a square foot. So, Whole Foods was like, "Holy shit!" What like <laughs> issue everything based off the of square footage, and it just so happened after our first restaurant success, the pandemic hit. So we had to take a step back and say, "Hey, what's going on? Are we just going to fold our new startups?" But we were lucky because as soon as like all these you know regulations started coming out, they, they we were deemed essential because we were inside of Whole Foods. Hmm. The other thing that happened with Whole, with Whole Foods is that their hot foods kind of folded due to the, the pandemic, right? So it's like, you know, we had this opportunity just to jump into all these different Whole Foods all of a sudden um, at very low cost, like no upfront costs. Wow. Like we're talking, you know, we <laughs> opened up. You open up ten stores, uh, probably off two hundred fifty thousand bucks. Wow, that's unheard of, right? Yeah. So we were able to work through the pandemic and open up nine more stores. So now we have ten. We have a fabulous business with Whole Foods. We proved our concept. We're climbing out of the pandemic, and we're going to go open our first New York City location um, in uh, in uh, Union Union Square uh, this December. So awesome! I lived in yeah. Union Square for two years. I know it well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's an awesome location. Well, listen, now that we're going to have plant-based burgers over there, man. <laughs> I know. When I go visit my friends, I'm going to I I will have a plant yeah. burger. Why I'm kind of getting hungry as it is right now. What's New, New York to South Carolina? What's what's up with that? Oh, I, well, I run an ad agency and yeah. I cut my teeth at some of the largest agencies in the world. So, I spent yeah. I've been in the business for 20 years and 17 working for other people, radicals, 3 years old, but I worked in Manhattan for you know, about five and a half years. So, uh, yeah, we both yep. got some of our training in Manhattan. I know. There you go. It's cutting Look my that. teeth, brother. The, uh, but I love it. So, but describe to me, okay, so we're, we're an indulgent burger, the plant yeah. burger. I'm getting hungry here. We're getting towards lunchtime. I'm like, hmm, plant mm. burger. Where is there one at our Whole Foods here locally? I don't know. I doubt it in South <laughs> soon, Carolina. <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon, I hope. The, uh, but what, is, when you say it's, is that is it indulgence more than you know? Uh, I don't know. Like I guess Incredible Burgers are it. 
you know, Burger King or whatever. <laughs> yeah. The impossible ones. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, so like, listen, you know, I own good stuff eatery. I've been in the burger business for a while. I would have never opened up a plant-based burger if I couldn't be as good, if not better, uh, than good stuff, you know, like, yep. so we did that, you know, and it was really, um, Seth, I, I was on a policy panel at GW and Seth was on the panel and he brought burgers and snuck them under my seat. Right. And basically said, I heard you're the burger King. He's like, <laughs> let me know what you think about these. And I kind of laughed him off. I was like, Oh, not another, I was like, not another vegan burger. And my wife is vegan. So, you know, I've always struggled with making her this black bean burger, which sucks too much water, vegetable burgers. They always sucked. Yep. Uh, and she never really got to enjoy burgers. So I took them home, grilled them up, and like they bled, they seared. I was just like, "Whoa!" Like, wait a second, you know? I was, I was taken back. So, I immediately emailed Seth, and I was like, "Hey, like, you guys really actually, you really have something here." Like, <laughs> and and I didn't even know who Beyond Meat was. It, you know, it's me. You know, obviously, I'm so retarded. I was like you you have something here right and and they've raised like hundreds of millions of dollars so so um you know but i think seth really you know took a, a liking uh, because the burger wasn't perfect and and i was able to give some critique on on some stuff and stuff that they probably had already known but they started engaging me on developing burger content and you know whenever they had a tasting for instance with a company they would get me to come there and and make the burger um, and slowly but surely I started developing this relationship with, with Seth. And, and, uh, so that's what we use. We use the beyond meat patty cause we think it's the best plant-based patty in the market right now. Um, and lucky enough, uh, like I said, like there's this massive shift in, in our food system. Um, I think it's for a couple of reasons. I think like whether, you know, you can debate if you believe climate change is real or not, but you know, People, when they hear climate change and they want to make a difference, I don't really think that they have so many opportunities to know how to make that difference, right? Yeah. It's just – it's a little lost. There's too much information out there about climate change and its effects. It's a little confusing, right, for for you know your, your everyday person that's just like working and going to work and taking care of kids and what have you. But one thing that we found that really resonates with people is if you look at food – through the lens of climate change, right? The choices that you make in your everyday diet actually can have a profound effect on the climate, right? Cumulatively as humans. So like taking the matters into, if you want to be the most effective, it's taking the matters into your own hands on where you put your money towards. So, you know, hopefully the idea of putting your money towards plant-based foods is something that resonates with people and they see it as a way to help, you know, reduce their own, personal environmental footprint right yeah. uh, and it doesn't have to you don't have to only be plant based i just again everything in moderation right a little bit of balance in, yeah. in the life so that's kind of like how we come to the market we have like this advocacy about climate change this is the climate change fast food brand of the future right mm -hmm. the best burger for the planet by the planet and and that's how we come at it we have s s the best sweet potato fries <laughs> that you've ever had with all the dipping sauces we do Oat based milkshakes, right? Oat tasties, you know, just like a frosty that you get at Wendy's. Yep. Um, our cheese is fall your heart cheese. It melts. It's delicious. It's made out of potato starch. It's absolutely fantastic. We're also, since we use Beyond Meat, we're soy free, GMO free, allergen free. And our whole brand is also kosher, which is huge. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think we just, we, we fire it at, you know, we're firing at all angles here on this concept. Um, and we're also democratizing plant-based foods, right? So again, this plays into a lot of the work I like to do in policy space where, you know, fast food restaurants really tar targeted, um, you know, uh, food deserts and, and people that, that came from, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, poor backgrounds, right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, very much the African American community or Hispanic community, all this. And, you know, you look at the rates of obesity and diabetes and it's all happening the most in these, these underprivileged, 
uh, societies and areas, right? Uh, and it's because of a, <coughs> it's because of what they're eating, you know? So for us, a lot of plant-based foods are too expensive. So again, we don't, they're not available enough. <coughs> Sorry. No worries. For, for everyone. So democratizing plant-based foods is a big part of what we do as well. So, um, you know, that's kind of why we've positioned plant burger as the next big fast food brand not fast casual brand. So, yeah, I love that. Cause that's been the biggest, I think you hit on a lot of points there, a lot to unpack, but I think you really nailed, I think what's been the biggest hurdle was the affordability, approachability, you know, positioning, you know, to broader markets, you know, cause it's one thing to be in whole foods. It's another to be in the fast food segment and really competing and making a dent in, you know, broader society. Yeah. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I mean, it is one thing to be in Whole Foods. And what that brought to us was like a confident consumer because, first of all, the Whole Foods brand really obviously amplifies what we were doing, right? Yep. Um, there's a, rare, a very, you know, uh, strict um, rule book on the ingredients you could use in your brand and the ingredients you can't use in your brand. And what I loved about that exercise at Whole Foods was that I came across stuff that I was using that I had no clue had this weird name chemical in it as a preservative that wasn't is, 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 we shouldn't use or, or things of that sort. So as a chef, it kept me so honest and transparent about what we were using in Plant Burger, right, that I'm completely transparent on what we do. Like the fact that we're kosher, the fact that we're soy, we have all these certifications and it's, and we're whole foods approved as well. So, you know, our supply chain is, is pretty locked up pretty well. Uh, so that's something like we're really proud of. But then after we gained that confidence and we gained that confidence of our brand inside whole foods, taking it to the streets of New York city in a brick and mortar for the very first time is going to be the true, the true test of our brand. So that's, you know, we're gearing up for that and we're looking forward to it. I think we're going to smash it. Uh, I think you, you know. are too. <laughs> yeah. I think we're perfect time, it. perfect place. Uh, it sounds yeah. like a hit to me. <laughs> yeah. There's a little vegan burger wars happening in New York city right now. There's a couple, you know, five, six, seven brands going down there now in uh, in a big way. So well, it it, it kind of takes us back, you know. I I listened to this podcast called um, I'm sure you've heard of the the Business Wars. Yeah. Yep. Right. So there's one called Burger Wars. Yeah. Right. That they do. <laughs> yep. It's about McDonald's and uh, Burger King, which was called Burger Chef back in the day, and um, they were talking about how they were all very much competing for the same space and all these different marketing things that they did to compete against each other. And it was like a war. Like they were literally, you know, as an ad running an ad agency, I'm sure you understand like, oh, yeah. man, they were going at it back in the day to develop. I feel like that's kind of where we're at right now with ourselves. So. Oh yeah. I've been involved in a few of those Verizon, AT&T, Coke, yeah. Pepsi, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Apple, Samsung, uh, at Motorola, I, I was part of it. I worked on a campaign. I worked on the Apple launch, actually, one of the first, the first ones, but then worked with Motorola when they launched the Droid. If you remember ooh, that, and like, that was like 2008, eight nine, the Droid totally. smartphone. Totally. And, uh, we had a whole campaign that, you know, was, I can't do this. Campaign. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it was fun. Um, cool, man. Uh, let me ask you this, a random, if I'm someone at home making burgers yeah. and give me your tips. Yeah, we're going to have the, the rad cast tips for at home rad cast, how, tips. rad cast tips for how can someone at home make a delicious burger? <laughs> yes. Well, here we go. Rad cast tips with Spike metal. Yes. I like it. This could be a new right. segment, brother. I mean, totally. <laughs> we're going to fire this off. So first of all, okay. Yep. You need good meat. Okay. Is if it's plant-based meat, you know, animal, whatever you guys are, are wanting to do, turkey, chicken, get a good blend of meat in there, okay? Now, always pull it out of the refrigerator and get it to room temperature. Never take your protein out of the fridge and put it right in the pan. That's a big no-no for starters, right? Burger bun ratio, let's talk about that, <laughs> all right? Guys, we can't be using these massive challah buns for burgers. It's too much bread. 
All right, make sure you get a bun that fits the size of burger that you're going to create. If it's a thin patty, get a little bit of a smaller of a bun. If you're going for this big hotel grill star, you know, poolside burger, I think <laughs> you can you get away with a little bit more bun. But very important, burger to bun ratio can make or break your burger. All right, salt and pepper. All right, I don't want to see anybody stuffing blue cheese or butter inside their burgers. Please, guys, whoever started that trend, please stop it, okay? <laughs> just, just just stop, all right? Just, just <laughs> let the protein be the protein. Salt and pepper that stuff right before you're about to hit it in the grill. Don't salt and pepper too soon. You don't want to get all that water out. Water and oil do not mix. Make sure you have a hot whispering, not smoking, whispering smoke of a pan, right? You want to wait for that little whisper of smoke come out. Then put your burgers in there. Set it and forget it. Flip it once. Don't smash. Don't smash. And then to where we pack all the flavor, toppings are everything in burgers, sauces, textures. Get some Funyuns in there, guys. Make some sriracha aioli. Get some caramelized onions. Uh, <laughs> you know, Make sure you get toppings. And then, of course, cheese. All right. Don't be lazy with your cheese melting skills. Okay. <laughs> Cap it. Cap uh, the pan. You know, we all have those lids that we don't use for all the pans we buy. Find one of those lids in your basement, bring it up, make sure you top it. You want to, you want to have like this again, whispering smoke of melting vacuum. The worst thing is just let cheese melt from the bottom heat up because then it separates and it brings a whole different texture to your cheese guys. Smiling cheese. We want, we want cheese to shine back at you. You should be able to see your reflection in your cheese, just like I see mine right now on this computer. Right. Uh, and that's it. I think I think that's it. I think I think those those are them. I love it. I love it. First, that's gonna be a highlight clip in itself. We're gonna have a two minute highlight of how to make the best burgers at home. Perfect. <laughs> you got Perfect. like uh, two minutes for a quick rad or fad. I give you a keyword and you tell me rad or fad. All right. All right. First, fireball, fire keg. <laughs> They're making fad. kegs of fireball. <laughs> Rad or fad? Fad. All right. Uh, food carts. Rad. All right. All right. Uh, impossible burgers. <laughs> you got to, you know. Fad. Oh, <laughs> uh, here's a layup. Plant-based. Totally rad. <laughs> I love it, brother. Where can everybody keep up with all things Spike Mendelson, Plant Burger, Good Stuff Eatery, everything? Where can everybody keep up with you, brother? Well, you guys can uh, you can follow me uh, at, at Chef Spike on Twitter and Spike the Chef on Instagram. Uh, but mostly you can probably just go to my website, which is, uh, chefspike.com and you can see all the stuff that I've worked on in the past 10 years and what I'm working on currently. And, you know, just kind of get a little idea of, uh, my, uh, what, what, what my brand is. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, get, get a good idea of what, uh, who I am and what I like, uh, like to do. And, and that's, that's it, man. Like we, uh, I'm in the, I'm a, in the DC area. If you guys are happen to be in the DMV, please hit us up. Look out for my NFT project. I'll be launching soon. Yes. You heard that right. Oh, Brian, <laughs> they suck me into this NFT world. We're going to see what happens. <laughs> I love it. I'm You're in the metaverse, brother. I'm in the metaverse. I can't get out. <laughs> metaverse. I love it, man. And uh, if you're in New York, Plant Burger launching yes. December. Opening up in December. We got three locations coming right behind it. I'm going to be in Miami next week at the Seed Food and Wine Festival. So if you're in Miami, come support the burger uh, a competition we have over there. And Ryan, let's do this again, man. This was fun. No, man, I, I love it. And uh, if I get to D.C., maybe we can get together. And maybe if I'm visiting friends in New York and you're there, we'll meet and have a plant burger. <laughs> totally. And you know what? I'm gonna, I am have friends in North Carolina, which I'm sure is not too far from yeah. South Carolina. There we go. So, uh, I need to venture off to South Carolina a little bit. I've not, it's, I haven't been. So. I'd love to show you around Greenville, man. So uh, yeah. there's a good food scene here. I think you jive with it. And uh, I really admire all you're doing. 
with uh, uh, food education and, and, and the like. So love it, brother. Let's stay in touch and we'll meet again. Thank you, Ryan. All right, guys, you know where to find us. We're at theradcast.com. Search for Spike. Search for plant food. All the content from today is searchable on our website. You know where to find me. I'm at Ryan Alford on all the channels. We'll see you next time. The Radcast. <laughs>